This is amazing. What was your name again? Danielle. Danielle. Yes. Danielle and Dexter, right? Oh yeah. He's the real star. Of this <laughs> oh, this is a little okay, crooked really bite. Yeah. Was the plan initially to put a console in here when you were thinking about the build? Well, you know the the, the token studio desk mm -hmm. that has become so popular. Um, that's that's kind of what I had always aspired to. Um, just a desk where I could have some outboard gear and stick my monitor in the middle of it, call mm -hmm. it a day. Most of the studios that do have a console that I've worked in always have that little sidecar for the Pro Tools rig. Yeah. Or for the, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, where your right ear. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. I so I definitely never really desired a console because of that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I worked with um, Carlos de la Garza, who had, oh, yeah. he had a 16 channel Wonder audio console, and his monitor was right smack in the middle of it. Perfect. And I was at his place and I was like, what is that console? <laughs> I need that. And you know, it's scalable, it's modular, so I mean, I don't need Oh, that's it. cool. I don't need a big console. Like, right. And there's not room for it in this, in this uh, space anyway. I do love just the tangibleness of it. Mm -hmm. I love the extra prees um, and the workflow. I mean, you know, the, Eight faders. That's just like my Tascam from mm. 1996. <laughs> so far, I've used the pre's, the EQs. Uh -huh. um, I haven't got really in delved into the auxes because, I mean, I, I mean, for me, it's an aux track and Pro Tools. Sure. Like I haven't quite. Yeah. My brain hasn't figured out how that translates yet. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love it for tracking drums, especially. And then, you know, with the way I set up my sessions, everything always gets summed to a, a drum bus, a music bus, a vox bus and it affects bus. So Sick. four stereos. Yep. So just sum them through that. Just you get that extra little analog gush. Yeah. And I mean, it makes a big difference, man. So this is called a wonder? Wonder, W-U-N-D-E-R, yeah. Sick. Yeah. I, this is the first one I've seen. It, it really? looks really, really cool, yeah. Um, is this, you said Carlos used this same console? He had a 16 channel. So oh, cool. like I said, they're modular. So I mean, they can go up to, I think, you know, I, I think the biggest one I've seen is 64. I think what he oh. had, I think he had another bank of eight over here. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could stick another eight down here if you want, depending on, you know, however you want to set it up. Mike at Wonder in Austin built this for me. Once the console was done, I flew down to Austin, threw it in the back of a minivan, you know, one of the ones where the seats, you know, disappear yeah. into the floor, um, and just drove it back and moved this puppy in here. And that's when I told the contractor, all right, the console's here, you got to be done. <laughs> yeah. What computer are you using? I have always been on a laptop. Oh yes, my guy. Yeah, I. Uh, Working a laptop. One of these days, I'm gonna. I'll upgrade to the, you know, the M1 Studio or whatever. Um, I still travel a lot. Yeah. And I don't even know how to have plugins on two different computers. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, yeah, man, I'm just on a laptop, and I use this uh, Bridge Dock. Oh, sick. Just sticker down there. That looks and, great. And uh, yeah, just you know, just LG computer monitor. The only thing I the only thing I don't take with me is my interfaces. So mm -hmm. I've just got my little Apollo twin that I yeah. take on the road with me. And so great. long as all my tracks are frozen, my sessions open just fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So you've got three of the Apollos over here. Yeah, we can all X eight Ps. That's awesome. Yeah. So with the console, I they talked me into upgrading to the X eight Ps with the D sub connectors, um, just to make you know, patching and wiring just a lot cleaner. You know, back when UA would do those uh, end of the year sales and mm -hmm. they would, you would, you know, buy an interface, get a free satellite. Yeah. Um, I don't think they do oh, that anymore, yeah. but I would, that, would, that, would, that would be my thing. It's like, okay, time to get one more, uh, one more Apollo 8. Yeah. Let's get the free satellite or whatever, Heck you know, yeah. then sell off the old ones, just kind of, it's like a, it's like a car lease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, now, now I'm set, 24 is more than enough. I mean. Sure. When I'm when I'm tracking drums, I'm 14 to 16 inputs. Um, I haven't had a need to use all 24 yet, but what it does help a lot with is monitoring back through the console, um, the headphone, um, you know, the headphone system. Uh, actually having all those separate outs yeah not being the same channels i'm going in on yeah when i'm doing a vocal i go through the 1073 the ba uh, usually cool. if i'm doing like some bass or maybe like some tom overdubs i'll use the apis i actually love the warm i'm not getting paid to say that 
I actually love the warm. The crease. 412? Yeah, that whatever that tone button does, yeah. holy sh no, I don't. I don't want to even know what it does. Yeah. Like, I don't want to know how the sausage is made with that tone button. Yeah. But man, I took. Take your R88. Oh yeah. Put it out. You know, out in your living room or even just front of kit mic is what I use it a lot for. Nice. Put it through that 412 and hit that tone button. I love it so much. <laughs> Whatever I want to monitor drums wise, mm -hmm. you know, I'll put my you know kick in, kick out, kick sub, snare mics, overheads, hi hat maybe. In these pre's. Yep. And then I'll also monitor monitor them here, so I can actually like kind of come up with a drum mix while I'm tracking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, you know, and then I can listen to the part. I can work with the player and not be distracted by like, oh my god, this just sounds like a lot of symbols. And then what's cool about this console is that, so we've got eight pre's and you know eight channels that I can bring Return. things back up to monitor on. But then it also has a separate monitor section of eight more channels. Yep. So there's no preamps in there, there's no transistors, no nothing. But if I want to bring my room mics in or just any other any anything else, I mm -hmm. can just patch them up here. And then these are this is actually my master. I use the last two channels on this as my uh, as my just you know my main mix. mix. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the workflow I've I've come up with now. Um, mm -hmm. you know all of this is still is still new. Like I haven't, I haven't touched faders since my old Tascam. So, hmm. um, so I'm still kind of figuring out everything this has to offer. So maybe we'll have to do a part two. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> once I've figured all out how to use it, we'll, we'll definitely do a follow up conversation on consoles. Sick. Drop a little hint there. <laughs> how long have you been using these PMC speakers? I've been seeing these pop up more and more. I literally got those last week. Ever since I sold those. NS10s that I got when I was a kid at my local music shop. I never found anything else that I loved, or at least that I knew as much as those. Yeah. So I've just been in this perpetual process of learning new monitors. These are the first pair of monitors that I've had that I can turn up really loud and they don't distort. Yeah. Um, the Yamahas that I've been using, like the HS7s, like whatever was like the most comparable to the, the NS10s. Um, you know, I can't listen, you know, I can't listen loud. I can't like, oh yeah, have the band vibe out to, you know, yeah. the a and R speaker mix. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. These will do that. And anywhere in the room, you still get some low end. I, I haven't turned my sub on yet. With oh, these. snap. Um, it's just that, yeah, the, the HS sub or whatever. Sweet. Um, have yet to turn the sub on. Um, and also the selling point for me was I got them last week. I started doing a rough mix. Um, on a new project I was working on. And then I had to go play a show um, with my band. So I took my laptop, my little Apollo, and my headphones, and I set it up in my hotel room. And as soon as I hit play, I was like, oh, f like, I don't need to tweak anything for this to be tolerable and to work on on my headphones. Like, it just translated yeah. immediately. And I was like, okay, sold. Is it set up in Pro Tools, like with your template, to where is laid out to work both in here and when you go? to just laptop or do you have to yes kind of do and some... no really the only thing i have to do um is once i get to like mix mode i just yeah. have to go to all my sub aux channels and just change the output to a one and two three and oh four, right, five, right. Two, and, and then it's good to go yeah. other than just like where it's coming through it, it's either it's either going to be coming out my main stereo bus mm -hmm. you know monitors and the headphones when i travel or it's going to you know be summed feed the console first um i do like to patch in my bus comp when i'm working in here sick um so that's that's just as simple as like you know turning on that insert and muting the ssl g bus in my, yep. <laughs> in my uh travel session okay and then you have more heads in here yeah when i am tracking guitars i am either playing them or i am here engineering yeah um I, i've learned through trying to have an engineer that I like to be sitting here and mm -hmm. touching everything and I have, it might be control issues control. I'm not sure I have um, I'm sure it is but uh <laughs> see so yeah, I want the knobs in here I want to yeah. I want to I want to tweak the sound here yes and here how it comes out at the speakers and I want to control them in here and then like I was saying earlier I've got you know under the foundation I got piping going to the ISO booth and that's where the speaker line comes out dude the cable routing and everything is Superb. Dude, that game changer. Like, apart from the isolation, the best part about this space, and really any studio space, 
is all the cables are behind the walls mm -hmm. and there is a surplus of power outlets. There's not a power strip in sight. <laughs> I've never gotten to live like that. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still do a lot of writing as well. So the control mm -hmm. room is kind of like, it's like the kitchen of the studio. Like everybody just mm -hmm. conglomerates in the, in the control room. Uh, so usually that will be me and two, maybe three other people sometimes. So I do like at least enough space for that. Um, yeah. And he's always here too. So yeah, dude, yeah. he's chilling right now. He is so chilling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you got all the great riding tools, the 60, the Meltron, is, and you I got mean, a Jupiter over there, bro? Yeah, if, if, you, oh can, my God. if you can tell me how that fucking works. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've always wanted a Jupiter 8, but uh, those things, I mean, those things are twice as much as a fucking console. Those oh, are okay, so that's, grand. that's Jupiter X. That's, that's like a Jupiter. different different version it's of the, the Jupiter. Jupiter X. It's a digital version of a Jupiter, but it's also got like the Juno 106 sounds in there, yep. et cetera. That's how little I know about it. I looked at that and I was like, that's it. It's, I wish <laughs> I wish it was a Jupiter 8. But so much of that synth is under the hood. Yeah. For me, the everything 60. you can control yeah. is hardware. Yes. So I reach for the 60 more than anything. I mm -hmm. love the Mellotron. My yep. poor man's Lin drum up there. I love that drum tracks. Oh, cool. Those three units, that's what I use the most.